Our next inductee is Ralph Bouncer Taylor. Too bad you guys didn't get your nicknames in here, sorry. Ralph played and coached the St. Louis Flyers in the 1940s. He and a few others started organizing hockey at the newly built Steinberg Ice Rink, newly built. Eventually, Ralph started the Amateur Hockey Association in St. Louis. If it were not for men like Ralph, St. Louis might not have had five young men drafted in the first round of the NHL. Accepting the award for Ralph is family friend Bob Kreutz. Congratulations, Ralph Taylor. Bob Kreutz. Thank you. You're welcome, Bob. Good evening, everyone. I am Bob Kreutz, and I never played a minute of hockey in my life. <laughs> but I am very proud of when I did go to CBC. <laughs> We're winning. <laughs> I was on the basketball team. Uh, but I'm so honored to be here tonight representing the family of Ralph Bouncer Taylor. And how he got his nickname is certainly obvious to all you hockey folks. I've been reading by the newspaper, one of his coaches, I think McKinnon or somebody, said, Ralph, get out there and bounce those guys around. And so that stuck with him uh, his whole career. But he was originally from Toronto, he played 13 very colorful years in professional hockey, including stints with the New York Rangers and the Chicago Blackhawks. He settled in Richmond Heights during the last stop in his playing career, as you mentioned, with the St. Louis Flyers. Mr. Taylor passed away at the age of 71 in 1976. He and his wife Ann had five children, Ralph Jr., Billy, Johnny, Mary Ann, and Teddy. Besides his hockey playing career, he was also a coach, referee, broadcaster, amateur boxer, White Sox baseball prospect. He, he was offered a contract with the White Sox are to play with the Blackhawks. He chose the Blackhawks. And he's also a very feared poker player. I'll start by explaining how I got involved in the process of nominating Bouncer to this Hall of Fame. I grew up in the city of Richmond Heights during the 1950s. And right across the street from me at West Richmond School was a baseball diamond. And all throughout the summer months, it was alive with kids playing baseball. I knew what hockey was, but because my dad, only because my dad used to take me to the Flyer games to watch Bouncer play. But we had no chance of ever playing as there were no rinks, no teams, nothing but an infrequent frozen pond. But we had baseball, thanks to a man named Bouncer Taylor, who started and managed the Richmond Heights Athletic Association. I remember as a five-year-old, Coach Taylor teaching us how to hit a baseball and then rerouting us to first base as we took off for third. A few years ago, I came across this photograph, just going through my old albums, and I was struck by this, I had it blown up. But this photograph, uh, on, uh, that's me standing on a chair between these two grown men. The man to your right is Bouncer. He coached my baseball team, the Sioux Indians. The man on your left is Dick Kokus, who played for my dad's favorite team, the St. Louis Browns. As I was looking at this photo, I came to realize the positive impact Mr. Taylor had on our young lives. Every neighborhood kid's childhood experience was greatly enhanced by his efforts. I knew he also played a prominent role in getting kids out on the ice to learn to play hockey. So I started looking around to see if he had been inducted into any Hall of Fame. I couldn't find one, no, not one. My curiosity got the best of me and I started searching the internet and contacting his family to collect more information. I dug up a treasure trove of old newspaper articles, photos, etc. The old sports writers loved to write about Bouncer because he was such a colorful character. Post-dispatch writer Tom Timmerman wrote a wonderful article about him just last year. The article was entitled, Youth Hockey in St. Louis Began with Bouncer. A lot of what I researched was written about his playing career, but there were also, also lots of information about how he contributed to the beginnings of youth hockey. 
I'll quote the famous sports writer for the Globe Democrat, Bob Burns. He did more to start the amateur hockey craze in this town than anyone else. Well, with that, I thought there must be enough information to have him considered for nomination. And so I collected it all and sent it on to Scotty Rupp. Scott was very receptive and helpful to the possibility of his nomination. His instructions were very clear and concise, and, uh, and I followed them. And Bouncer, along with Shrimp McPherson, Eddie Olson, Milligan, and all those, started it at the Steinberg Outdoor Rink in 1961. The first class of skaters were only five years old. Those kids paid $2.50 each for the Saturday morning ice time. The team was named the Little Shavers. And I have brought some buttons with me. I hope you all, there's some on your desk left. But back then, the Shaver meant a lot of people wondered, what does that mean? It just meant nothing but means little kid. <laughs> I had these buttons made to commemorate him because you, you can think of him when you take one home. Bouncer did not just quit after helping start youth hockey. He went on to coach and mentor these kids for another five years. He eventually became the first commissioner of the Amateur Hockey Association, which speaks to his long-term commitment. Just to show you how dedicated he was, Bouncer, while working for the Geisler Jorgen Sporting Goods Store, often took his pay in the form of equipment for the league rather than money. Now that is way and above the call of duty. And here with us tonight, representing the Taylor family, is Bouncer's great-great-granddaughter, Peyton Adams, and I'm going to ask her to come up here for a minute. I want you to tell everybody who you play for. I play for the Merrimack Sharks. And that's an all-boys team. She plays goalie for. And you also play on another team. I also play for the Lady Cyclones. So it's really her night here tonight, her and her family. Uh, I just uh, had the impetus to get things started. That's all I did. But who knows, maybe she might be the first female goalie drafted by an NHL team. How about that? I'm not going to bet against her. <laughs> Stay here. My own grandsons, George and Patrick, play hockey at a high level. Their dad, Neil Komodowski, is a prime example of how far youth hockey has come in St. Louis. Neil began playing for the Creep Corps Comets at five years old and made it all the way to being drafted by the Ottawa Senators in 2001. Neil and Jan Stasny played together at Notre Dame. Neil's dad, Neil Sr., played 12 years in the National Hockey League for the Blues and the Kings. Currently, Neil and his dad contribute very much to youth hockey by helping coach both of my grandson's teams. It's amazing to look at how far we've come when we see these new awesome facilities popping up all over the greater St. Louis area. I was asked to stick to hockey in this speech, but I, I, I gotta tell this brief story because it, it defines who he was as a person. As I mentioned earlier, Bouncer ran the Little League Baseball program in Richmond Heights. Back in those days, the neighborhood was racially segregated. There were lines that were never crossed. Bouncer did not understand why this situation had to exist. And so he went down to the African American community, west of Laclede Station Road, and created a team of their own and put them in our all-white league. Surprisingly, the team was welcomed into the league and helped to integrate the local landscape at a time when it was not easy or popular to do so. I was one of those 12-year-old kids who played and I must admit it had, it had a permanent impact on my life. It took real guts on the part of Bouncer Taylor to do this, especially in the year 1955. He took a huge risk, but he was not afraid to take it. A decades-old barrier in the town of Richmond Heights was lifted. And after contemplating how much time, effort, and money spent out of his own pocket, mentoring young men in junior hockey, I had my fingers crossed when this committee took its vote. And so on Christmas morning, 2019, 43 years after his passing, the dream came true, and Bouncer's family was officially notified of his election into this prestigious hall. So thanks, Bouncer, from all of us here tonight for being such a character builder and role model. 
instilling the qualities of fairness, teamwork, courage, and most of all, being true to your convictions. Although Mr. Taylor is long gone from us, his legacy will not be forgotten, thanks to all of you. Bouncer did not live his life for himself. He lived it for all of us sitting here right now, and for all the kids who ever picked up a hockey stick or a baseball bat. Congratulations, Bouncer, on your long-awaited induction. Take your place alongside your old friends, and I hope you are celebrating with them in heaven tonight. Thank you.